here today. I've got a little tip with SharePoint Framework. First off, it's a really cool tool. It uses Gulp and NPM and Webpack. But I had a few issues, and maybe this will save you guys some time. So Webpack has configurations to allow specific file types to load. I'm trying to load Font Awesome, which uses a Wolf 2 file type, but Webpack doesn't support that. And so we can't just go configure Webpack like you would normally because SharePoint Framework defines that. What we need to do is I'll add the font types here and save and run. So if you saw those errors, I'll show you again in a second. The issue is, is SharePoint defines the Webpack configuration and we can't really go in and change that because it doesn't go across all development environments. And it doesn't, by default, support this font type. So there's a little workaround that I'll show you real quick. It is going into the gulp file JS, which is in your main project for your SharePoint framework build. And in between add suppression to hide that CSS warning and the initialize, we're going to type some things. I've got it copied here so that we don't have to spend all the time typing, but I'll explain what it is. So first thing, I added a URL loader package through NPM. Second thing is I defined the rule that I want. So you'll see it's wolf2 rule. I have a test with the regular expression to search for all wolf2 file types and then I tell it to use the URL loader. This is because the default configuration doesn't know what to do with the Wolf2 file type. If you look, well, let's go back and run it again. Super fast. If you look here, we'll see that it says that, oh, come on, yep. It says that it doesn't know how to handle the file type. And so adding this loader configuration here will tell it how to handle the file type. Now, the big point is you need to know this right here. Build, which is your defined variable up here from SP build web. You configure the web pack and you merge your configuration. Now in here, you've got your generated configuration, which has a modules object and a rules array. You push your rule to that array, which then when it loads, it sees that and knows what to do with the wolf2 file type. And we have to be sure to return the generated configuration back out, because if you don't, your configuration will be blank. And then when Gulp initializes, it'll load our custom rules here and properly show the wolf2 file type. So now that I saved it, I got to restart gulp because, uh, yes, because this gulp JS or gulp file doesn't get reloaded every time things are saved like some other parts inside using gulp. And so we'll do another gulp serve. And as you'll see, It'll go really quickly, it won't show any errors, and then it'll load the browser. I'll bring this window back up to show that there aren't any errors. So as you see, there's no red text showing errors. And if we go in here and we add the web part again, we now see that the fonts work. A trouble that you might have is you might say, well, if we don't have this and we get that error, but it still runs, what happens? And so I'll show you. You get the error in the back end, but it still runs the web part. And it shows a pretty hideous error message that it's kind of hard to decipher. It just says component issues and you might need the appropriate loader to handle the file type, which is actually what we needed to do. Hopefully, 
if you're facing issues, you'll recognize that this is not Webpack 1, so it doesn't have loaders. It's got module rules, and those have to be written in the specific syntax of your test, your loader, and then you can have an option object with your name and file type and where you want to pipe it. Pretty sure this is it for today. I hope that this is helpful for you guys to clarify how to add your own rules to the Webpack module when you're trying to work with SharePoint because it's not only the Wolf 2 file type with Font Awesome. That was just the instance that I ran into. So I hope this is helpful and have a great Friday.